Hey, welcome back to the Trillion Army Podcast. So my guy came up on the he decided to came come and and actually discuss the wealth gap. Uh he actually shared a post and I'll post it on the screen so you can see it right here. But it talked about um what Ice Cube shared, how black America owned 0.5% back in the early 1900 And I think it was like up to 2020 when he shared it, we still own 0.5% of America. So, and, and, you know, man, just get to it, man. Like, you know, kind of explain a little bit about yourself and then we'll go into the purpose of the episode. For sure, for sure. So my name is Kamo. I am a serial entrepreneur, a real estate investor and developer. I'm born and raised in Dayton, Ohio. I went to Dayton Public Schools Mm -hmm. um, from the West Side. Mm -hmm. And I just recognized growing up that, you know, things look differently every time we went shopping in the suburbs. Just the energy, you know, the character, the vibe there felt different. Mm-hmm. Even outside of the white people we saw walking around, it was like, why does this, why does it look different? It doesn't feel like despair. It doesn't feel like hopelessness. And, it's, you know, as a kid, you can't figure out, like, what is it? Mm-hmm. But as I got older, I realized it was the wealth gap. You know, mm-hmm. the fact that we didn't have the resources, we weren't generating enough economic output mm-hmm. um, to be able to invest in ourselves and our communities mm-hmm. and make them the way that we deserve to have them be. Mm-hmm. And so as I got older, it was like, what can we do that can be different? Because, I mean, these are people, these, these other people don't have more arms or legs or, right. you know, a bigger brain or, like, anything like that. It's like, what can we do mm-hmm. that can, you know, equal or surpass that so we can correct this issue? Right. And so, you know, I began my journey um, in my career towards figuring out how to close that wealth gap okay. through ownership. Whether okay. that be business ownership or land ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, because those two things uh, kind of dictate wealth versus income which is going to get a job for somebody mm-hmm. you know having a hustle um even stuff in the streets you know it's an income mm-hmm. and at that point you can still lose your life to it so it's like man we got to have some better options and, right uh, i realized that by being black in america mm-hmm. we are entrepreneurial by default right so nobody is really stepping up and telling us like you know just our very existence mm-hmm. and continued existence mm-hmm. is an entrepreneurial pursuit mm-hmm. yeah i think it's definitely unnatural for us to go work for someone else absolutely and, uh, you know, and, and when I seen that post, it, it was very shocking and, and definitely who shared it because, you know, during that time that was during the presidential election and he was like, uh, you know, he was meeting with the presidential candidates yeah. trying to discuss options that will help the black community. Absolutely. And it wasn't even a selfish option. I mean, because he, he made a point. We're always at the bottom of the barrel. Absolutely. And, you know, we're always like. And we always last, man. We don't we don't own nothing. Our neighborhoods don't look the best. And like I said, you have to be a fool to to, to not to, to not recognize that. Definitely growing up. Absolutely. You know, so when he said that, and and and, and again, I didn't see the post until you shared it. Mm. it. It did start making me think and I started doing some research, right? Mm. So I look at like all the programs that that's supposedly supposed to help inner communities. Yeah. You know, a lot of those came, was I think in the 60s. Yeah. You know, and the nuclear family, black family was actually stronger yes. prior to all these things Precisely. because, you know, uh, we were strong. We weren't yeah. independent. We, yes. we, we we depended on our community. Yes. And, you know, we were making moves to, to build the community up. Now, after all these programs are initiated mm-hmm. that's supposed to help us, mm-hmm. it seems like we regressed further. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in that, you're absolutely right. And the sad part is, is that, you know, we think we progress forward with things like integration, mm-hmm. social service programs, so on and so forth. And mm-hmm. those things have crippled us as mm-hmm. a cultural group. And, you know, I'm always, you know, telling people like we need to run our own race. And, you know, they mm-hmm. think I'm referring to politics, but it's like, no, literally mm-hmm. the rest of the world sees this whole thing as like a race. When they refer to race, Dr. Claude talks about this, Dr. Claude Anderson, mm-hmm. like they really mean a track race. Like mm-hmm. where are you at in the rankings? And we mm-hmm. are always last because we are always last. Right. We're always last and thinking about how do we put ourselves in the best position. Mm-hmm. We're always last, you know, worrying about how we, we need to be worried about somebody else's plight. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's not meant to be um, selfish or, you know, just only concerned with our cultural group. But it's like if we aren't good, we can't help anybody else. Right. So we have to. We have a duty if we do seek to be providers, be leaders in this, you know, in this country, in the world. Mm-hmm. We have to be moving as such, and that means that you have to make tough tough sacrifices. And a lot of us don't want to make those tough sacrifices for that leap because we want to keep, you know, comforting ourselves because Mm -hmm. it's hard work, man. Like, it's 
to be an owner and to have responsibility and to have, you know, people working for you and doing something where you're directing mm-hmm. is a scary thing to think about when you know, most of us can't even do that within ourselves. Yeah, there's, there's no paycheck in this right now. I no. mean, it's, it's, it's literally like just with my channel yes. and, and my podcast is for self-development, yes. definitely within our community. Yeah. But, you know, um, I think it was uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 2013. I'm not a religious man, and, and if I misquote it, but it talks about that, you know, a man who sleeps often, yeah. you ain't got the time to. Like, yeah. you'll be poor. Absolutely. You know, and, you know, I look at night. Like, last night I had four hours of sleep. Cleaned the house up, got it together. Yeah. You know, got my appointment set up. And, you know, it's just it was one of the things when I was discussing with my wife. I was like, you know, in order to pass on generational wealth, mm-hmm. these are the type of things we need to think about. Absolutely. Every, like, you got to have that end goal. Yes. And all your actions have to align with that. Precisely. And, again, in each nuclear family, is able to encompass that. We're, we'll, we'll grow our community. And, and I like what you said, like, it's not selfish. Because if you look at the Asian communities, mm-hmm. all the other communities are making moves to to better not only their family, but it betters the community around them. They're able to pull their resources together. Yes. You know, for example, when I started my business, very few likes. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, okay, cool, start a business, little, little podcast. Sure. But, oh, I, I got a, a job as a cybersecurity analyst. Mm-hmm. I'm getting so much love. And, yes. You know, and it's just like, that's great. I, I'm thankful for that. But it's like, you realize that although I make a decent amount doing that job, mm-hmm. the ones who's really making the, the money is yeah. the, the, the person who owns the contract. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's the guy I want to be. Absolutely. That's the one who's passing on the generational wealth Precisely. to his children and building up his community. Yep. Yep. But yep. we don't encourage that energy. Yep. You know, we don't encourage that within our community. Well, actually, we do. Um, okay. Well, we encourage it in the form of illegitimate, what is considered illegitimate in this country, you know, trapping in the streets. And I that's why, that. you know, mm-hmm. Trap House is named Trap House is because mm-hmm. I realized that these young brothers and these young sisters who, you know, are on that side of the coin, mm-hmm. you know, dealing in the dark arts, it's like it has its place. It's a balance to everything. Right. So in that we're the best entrepreneurs in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to entertainment and everything surrounding it, mm-hmm. we are more propitious than anybody else. Mm-hmm. And so with that, you know, we're doing supply chain management. Mm-hmm. We're doing financing. We're doing, you know, sales training. We're doing, you know, credit um, extensions. You know, mm-hmm. we're just going through that loss prevention, you mm-hmm. know, risk mitigation. Like when Cass is in the streets, they're doing the same thing a Fortune 500 CEO has to consider mm-hmm. in running that operation. The only right. difference is the product in place is right. the wrong one. So it's like we aren't off, far off the mark. Like in order to we're exist really in this world, you okay. have to produce. And so we have always been producers, mm-hmm. whether it was the numbers that they turned to the lottery, mm-hmm. you know, whether it was, you know, the uh, after the free school uh, breakfast programs that, you know, the government took from the Panthers. Like, we've mm-hmm. always been innovators and, and creators and solutionists for our problems. Mm-hmm. But we've never really understood since we got, you know, released from slavery, since we uh, got our freedom, mm-hmm. achieved freedom. Mm-hmm. We've never gotten to that point of, like, truly standing on our own, too, and not trusting. So, like, the Freedmen's Bank. Was you know one of the largest banks with the most black wealth ever concentrated, and all that money got misappropriated and squandered, where it ended up with zero. Mm-hmm. So that's where you see like this distrust in our community of banks because mm-hmm. after, right after post slavery, they tried to do something and claimed it was for us, and the people they put at the helm was of course white men, mm-hmm. and of course all the money ended up missing. With I think within 10, 20 years, it was mm-hmm. gone. Like I, mean, I wasn't even aware of that. Hundreds of millions of dollars in that account, in that wow. bank. And that mm-hmm. was meant for us. It was a, a bank for free black people to help mm-hmm. them get into building wealth. Mm-hmm. And so in that point, from that point on, we never really trusted as a cultural group, mm-hmm. the banking system. But it's right. so much that can be used. And I tell people, like, if anything, one thing that we got as a result of slavery mm-hmm. was the fact that we got a social security number. And people are like, oh, what do you mean? You know, I'm like, I'm not talking about the citizenship part per se. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the benefits, securities, and privileges that come with that citizenship. And it's not even really... We aren't citizens. We're Thirteenth Amendment citizens, but in right. that, that social gives us access to the credit system, unlike any other in the world. There mm-hmm. is no other credit system in the world like the United States credit system, mm-hmm. where you can literally take nine digits mm-hmm. and know how to make things shake and maneuver, and right. all legitimate, mm-hmm. but end up with hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars at your disposal for what you need to do. Right? There's nowhere else in the world you can do that. So people literally, you know, fight you know, and die and, and pay everything they have, every last penny that they can just mm-hmm. to make it to this country to get those nine digits of their own mm-hmm. because they know what they can do with our credit system. You know what? And, I, and I'm glad you pointed it out. You said you touched on a few things. For the last thing, I, I traveled the world and uh, worked overseas. Mm-hmm. And you really 
don't realize the power of your blue passport yeah. or how many people want the citizenship. You know, and again, I, there are issues within our country, but I feel like that you kind of got to take ownership and be thankful where you are. Definitely when you travel and you see how many people are trying to get here yeah. and it's because of the opportunities. Yeah. And that's where we see other, you know, let's, let's bring it forward to where we are now. Mm. When we have other groups, even Africans yes. who come over here and make it happen. Yep. Owning our businesses, yep. making power moves. So we have to understand there's, there's, there is a disconnect. Mm. And, uh, and I agree what you pointed out about the, uh, let's say with trapping and, yeah. and the things that we, kind of perpetuate as culture, yeah. but it was our way of a means to end to make 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 ends meet. Yes. And you know, I've always told my wife, I was like, you know, when I look at drug dealers, I look at they're like the best businessmen. Absolutely. They they are businessmen. They are entrepreneurs. They don't have that mindset of working with somebody, Absolutely. working for somebody. Absolutely. And you know, I, I think the the downfall of that is the it's destroying our community. Absolutely. So, you know, it's it's a capitalist mindset. Yeah. But the 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 cost, mm -hmm. the real cost, yeah. when it's destroying the neighborhoods around you. Yeah. You know, I grew up in a situation where my father was addicted to drugs and mm -hmm. still struggled with that. Mm -hmm. So you know, when you look at all these families that go through that, mm -hmm. that's where it's just kind of like you know, we have to start changing the narrative Absolutely. and stop perpetuating that in our culture. To like, this is the only way, man. You got to trap. You got to do this. Like, no, let's change. Listen, you have that mindset, like yeah. you said. We not, we can't work for other people. Absolutely. You have the mindset you you want to build something, build it. Yes. You know within our education system. Yeah. Like definitely within our communities, we need to teach finance. We need yes. to teach the importance of credit. Like Absolutely. there were things that I didn't even learn about investing until I became in my mid to late twenties. And it's too late. You're we were out the game by then. Not only out the game, but just like literally, uh, you know, Tony. Yeah. We talk about like. Man, if we went back in time. I would have invested in this, and I would have had X amount of money. Yeah, you know. And, and again, it's it's never too late to start. But mm -hmm. just imagine if we start really showing our children this, because it's it's good to go over the history, yeah. understand how we got here. But like now, we got to fix it. We got, which to. is why you created a uh, trap house. Absolutely. You know, like we got to fix it. We we got to get on board. We got to start changing the narrative. We got to. You know, like I, I I get the power with the vote and, mm -hmm. and voting. We've always voted Democrat. Right. You know, and again, and that was because with the the Civil Rights Act that was passed. Right. You know, right. and, and and again, we we control our vote, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of power. Absolutely. But if we see our communities and our changing, and again, it's I don't want to put it all on politicians mm -hmm. because it comes down to us. Absolutely. But but we have to start understanding. Like, wait a minute, these people we're electing over our communities mm -hmm. are set by over this drugs is rampant. Mm -hmm. Everything is going crazy. Mm -hmm. How can we rechannel that energy? Indeed. So Dr. Claude talks about in the five-story building, because we use the vote Republican. We weren't always Democrats. At one point in time, we saw the value of voting Republican mm -hmm. and ran with the Republican Party because of like the whole, you know, self-reliance, you know, mm -hmm. self-sustainability, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, with the social service programs, Democrats realized, like, you know, we can basically get them here and keep them on the teeth. Mm -hmm. You know, never let them off the umbilical cord because right. they'll always need us. You know, right. they'll never be self sufficient again. And mm -hmm. and in a capitalistic system designed as the one here in America is, there has to be a it's a caste system. There has to be like a base level mm -hmm. of poverty. Like the broad majority of people have to be poor mm -hmm. in order to support the peak. You know, right. the sharper the point gets, the fewer people that can fit in that point right. in a pyramid. So. Mm -hmm. That's literally how it is designed. It's as a pyramid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to focus on the economic piece. Dr. Claude talks about the five-story building. Mm -hmm. And what he talks about is, you know, the five stories starting with economics as the, as the ground floor. Mm -hmm. You can't deal with the other stories without the first story being good. And mm -hmm. so we've tried to jump to the second story, which is politics. Mm -hmm. And we think that we can play the politics game by voting. Mm -hmm. That's not how politics is really played. Like, real laws are passed mm -hmm. by people lobbying. Mm -hmm. People having enough money to say, hey, I'm making sure this candidate gets in office, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make sure that the bills that I want passed, the laws that I want passed, things mm -hmm. I want removed and changed are mm -hmm. going to happen mm -hmm. because this candidate is in my back pocket. Right. So it's like legal like payoff. Like People right. don't get like lobbying is just another form of business mm -hmm. where you're just you're endorsing a candidate. Mm -hmm. And it's like we believe we can vote him in, mm -hmm. and then it's like, okay, we got you in. You got it for the rest of your term. Mm -hmm. We'll just sit here and watch. Mm -hmm. That's not how politics is played. It's right. not a sideline game. Mm -hmm. You have to be actively with that candidate and pushing for those initiatives or mm -hmm. Otherwise, they get absorbed and usurped by somebody else mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, and it, and you end up not getting your mission, you know, achieved. So yeah. we don't have the economics mm-hmm. to lobby and play the politics game. And mm-hmm. then from there, the politics go into the justice, the third floor, mm-hmm. where you're actually able to change the, what the police departments look like. You're mm-hmm. able to change what the courtrooms look like, who's mm-hmm. in the courtroom, the prosecutors, mm-hmm. you know, the district attorneys, the mm-hmm. judges, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you control the media. And then from the media, it's education. So he's mm-hmm. like, we always focus on all these things from the top down. Mm-hmm. And the economics is always the last thing. Kind of remind me of, uh, remember Maslow's higher, hierarchy of needs? That same type of concept. Yeah, same it's the type. same mindset. Like basically, like you said, we, we have to get this base level first. And what was the base level? Economics. Economics. Yes. So, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. so with economics, yeah. you know, I, what we perpetuate in our culture, the things we buy, like the, yes. we focus on the clothes, the shoes, the diamonds, and all that stuff. And, yeah. and, and, and again, I, 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 I talked about this yesterday in the podcast, but it's, it's like we're not building, indeed. You no know, production, like, no concession. production. You know, like you know, we're, we're uh, a few people I see like they start businesses and I always talk like, hey, you know, you're looking for an investor. Mm-hmm. You know, I like dealing with people like that mm-hmm. because when you have those conversations, you're growing. Indeed, you're growing. You you understand we could put our money together if I if I got a project that's you know let's say hundred fifty thousand. I can't really tie up my money like that, but let's all put in. Let's get my family. Indeed, let's get here. Indeed. You know, my brother-in-law, he, he made a good point, and he talks about a village. Mm-hmm. And I know with your business, you really focus on housing, correct? Uh, yeah, so Trap House focuses on venture development for underrepresented founders, so helping big black and brown business owners or mm-hmm. startup you know, founders start their businesses or scale them, and then design the build is the shipping container development and construction operation where we're working on the ownership of land and redeveloping that land okay his isn't that far Mm -hmm. but with his he he talks about within the family like hey let's get this property yes let's get that one let's hook it up let's get up and we just own them yes you know and it could be b-class properties that we own Mm -hmm. and we buy this whole block Mm -hmm. and then we'll work on the next block Mm -hmm. and you know and and, and, and i love the village aspect and Mm -hmm. we've got out of that because People don't understand that we, like you said, we have, we have to own stuff. Have we have to, you know, and it's it's cool. Like, like you said, they may love our music, they may love our image, and we have that power. Yeah. When we gain these economics, we need to turn back and say, "Hey, we need to own our community." And you see these. I mean, you see rappers, you see athletes, you see them doing that now. Where it's cool for Warren Buffett to sit down with LeBron James mm-hmm. and you know Jay Z, but I've been asking people like, why can't Warren go and go to Marcy Project schools, the schools around Marcy's Projects or the schools up in Akron mm-hmm. and go talk to these kids. It's never going to be a Jay-Z or LeBron James because everybody can't be that. Exactly. And actually say, hey, you know, you got a better chance of getting as rich as I am mm-hmm. and as rich as they are by doing what I'm doing versus chasing what they're doing. Exactly. Like, and be honest with them. But it's like, no, it's cool for him to talk to them now because now they have the wherewithal to mm-hmm. invest in his fund. Right. So now it's cool to have his arm around them. It's like, mm-hmm. when was the last time you saw Warren Buffett with his arm around somebody black? Right. That wasn't a billionaire. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't on their way to being a billionaire. I don't recall it at all. Exactly. So Design and Build and Trap House are both designed with that community piece. So like Design and Build in particular, when you talk about the family, mm-hmm. taking a block, building it out, that's mm-hmm. precisely why we did that. Because prefab, modular, factory built housing mm-hmm. lets us get the cost in check and the process in check to where you could come with your family and say, hey, I know where there's, you know, a block in the hood that nobody wants. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play real life Monopoly and build a couple houses there mm-hmm. with a couple of my friends, my brother-in-law and his family, whoever mm-hmm. else, you know, your twin brother, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And it's like, boom, we can now crowdfund the resources together to build a couple properties that we can rent out or Airbnb, multifamily, whatever. Mm-hmm. And we're making it a- approachable, accessible mm-hmm. for us to actually get into development as a community and as a culture. So that's exactly why. I formed Design to Build because it's like we aren't playing in the real estate development game just like we aren't playing in the venture development game with starting business. And, like, and, and, and there, there's few, and we don't want to take away, there's there's few, there's, of course, there's few that's doing it. And I and I actually seen a statistic where there is a, a good minority of African Americans who are actually becoming millionaires. Absolutely. It's, it's like, it's, it's actually surprisingly. Absolutely. And, but what I hate is that that type of news doesn't make it to, because they're not rappers, they're no. not, uh, 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 sports players right. are not in the typical things that we associate with what black millionaires to be. I Indeed. mean, they're construction workers uh, that own construction businesses and, Absolutely. you know, own companies and, you know, and, 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 and they were the ones who were making those decisions. Yes. Yes. Kind of like what we're doing with our family and the people around us, you know, and it, it's slowly growing, but I feel like that in order to pick up the pace, mm-hmm. because like I said, like you said, it's a race. Yes. You know, at the point, you know, 
with the kids, it's like passing the baton to them. Precisely. You know, and but we have to get it to them. Right, right. You right. know, because our kids are so far back, they don't know so much. They mm-hmm. they they get out in the game and they're bought in this game, like, well, I gotta go to school to I don't, I don't teach my kids that. No doubt. I feel like kids today are now actually starting to you know, be like, I mean, I was reading something that was saying that the skilled trades mm-hmm. are through the roof. The skilled trades program is through the roof. Mm-hmm. And community college attendance has plummeted. Mm-hmm. We're like, you know, kids, the generation alpha, Gen Z, Gen Alpha is like, no, that's not the way. Like millennials, we were kind of like, yeah, we don't believe it, but we really don't have a way. So we're, we're really pioneering and forging a path ahead to mm-hmm. kind of create those lanes. And now I feel like those come behind us. Like you said, I'm always, you know, like, you know, people say it's a marathon and I'm like, one. You ain't even never ran distance, you know. You can't really speak about that. And I'm like, and I was a distance runner in high school. You Not were, really was yeah. it was a track distance, but cross country. So I'm like, I know what it means to be on the road alone by mm-hmm. yourself because mm-hmm. you got to run X number, you know, of miles, mm-hmm. 10x, 5x than which the race that you're actually going to run in order for you to be able to compete exactly. at a sufficient level. So you're out there by yourself alone. And again, that was another thing where like distance running wasn't glorified back in high school. Like, mm-hmm. and what I realized was whether, you know, if I was running a 6,400 meter, Mm-hmm. And this dude is running a hundred meter dash, hundred mm-hmm. yard dash. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, he, we get the same number of points for that race, mm-hmm. but I have to run sixty four times longer than he does. Right. And so it was like I had to accept the fact that it was like, yo, my points count just as much. I have to be for the team mm-hmm. by doing my thing separately. So like, it looks like I'm alone mm-hmm. out there, but I know that I'm running for the team because mm-hmm. my three points count just like the dudes running hundred meters, who everybody's mm-hmm. gonna be up in the, in the in this crowd, you know, in the stands cheering for. Because they meter is like literally just a straightaway, or they run is just a straightaway. Mm-hmm. So it's like I had to accept what I'm doing is not going to always be glorious. Oftentimes, it's not going to be glorious at all. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get the you know the support that I know it deserves. But that's okay because I'm not doing it for my own you know validation. I'm right. doing it for the team, and so that's how I look at the work I'm doing. It's like it's been a long time I've been doing it, mm-hmm. and now that it's kind of coming to the forefront in the, like our our culture, you know, our young people are like, yo, we want this. Mm-hmm. People are like, bro, you should be on TikTok. You should be on IG, you know, live and doing all this. And I'm like, man, I'm I'm working to get there, but I never did it for that reason. So it's exactly. hard to manifest that in myself to like want to pursue it on that end. But I'm like, I know people don't know that I'm doing what I'm doing unless I get out there. So I'm, I'm yeah. I mean, it, and it's something you know, it's like you said, it's a marathon in a sense, and we have to you know get out there, yeah. get the race going. Yeah. And you've been putting, you've been doing all the working out, putting in the leg work. To, to because I mean I've recognized your stuff. I was overseas, like man, this brother over here doing it, bro. Like, yeah, well, no doubt. that was came over there doing, you know. So I, you know, I, I was noticing overseas, and I was showing people what was going on within our community. So, you know, I, it, it, I don't want this to be dark and gloom, like mm-hmm. nothing's happening. Mm-hmm. Stuff is happening. Absolutely. I just, I just feel like that we, for those who are not aware, this is what this podcast is for. This mm-hmm. is like, look at the statistics mm-hmm. as far as with our race. Where, where we really stand. Like, we're literally at the bottom of the barrel. If we're at 0.5 and 1,900, yeah. according, and then we're, like, close to 2020, we're still at that same mark. Mm-hmm. All right, we had a problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, we, we did the trapping. Yeah, mm-hmm. we we glorified the things that actually destroyed our community. Yeah. Let's turn it around. Let's change the image. Like, I, I was telling, I was talked about in the podcast yesterday mm-hmm. how we um, demonize, mm-hmm. like, being the square. Indeed. We we put a negative connotation on taking care of your family, yeah. make making business moves, and mm-hmm. and not being able to go out all the time, yeah. and saving your money, investing, being level headed, being level headed. Like yeah. it's it's literally like you know the the podcast my wife was referencing that I brought up. You know they they was demonizing Russell Wilson. <laughs> I'm like, so he is square. He, this dude made millions. Mm-hmm. He got, he take care of his family. He ain't disrespecting his home. And yeah. again, we don't know what standards they have within their home. Right. But you know what though? It's like with LeBron, he's he's doing his thing. Absolutely. You know, and we demonize people who who try to push, propel, even like and I and I have much respect for LeBron because he went back to his communities making schools. Mm-hmm. Cause he understands these are the things that are really important. Yeah, he absolutely. has the economics. So he's he's going through those layers absolutely. that you referenced Dr. Claude said. Absolutely. You know, and although we all don't have that we can pull together because if you got money, like it's so cliche. But yeah. if you got money to buy the latest shoes, latest phones, mm-hmm. you know, spend all your time on social media. And yeah. really, the real reason why I'm not on social media a lot because I'm working straight up. Like exactly. I'm busy. Like I don't have. Like I'll make a podcast and I got like one day to be sharing this. Yeah. Other than that, I'm like, who's next? Right. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. What What can our our audience learn next? Absolutely. You know, how can I get better? Like that's that's what's 
how can I get a team together to offset some of the things that I'm doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's where, you know, that's that's what we want, man. Yeah. Like, we, we want to be surrounded by that. We want to do that. And that's what's yeah. actually going to grow the community. Absolutely. But it's, it's, it's just when we're at the back of the race, I kind of feel like, I know it's a marathon, yeah. but damn, we need to pick up the pace. We, yeah. We're going to have to, like... You know, we used to say back when I was in the Army, and I wasn't a runner in high school. You know, I always did the arts and video and stuff. Yeah. So when I got to running, I remember, like, the first few times I, like, failed my PT test. I'm like, yeah. man, I'm not used to running. Yeah. And that dude told me, like, I don't give a damn if you throw your ass up. Right. Throw up, you throw up, whatever. Right. Get across that damn line in that time. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and once I start thinking about it differently, it's like, get your ass across that line. And yeah. that's where you, I don't care if you throw up. I don't yep. care. If you got to go without, you, you ain't got the money to the go out. Cry all yeah, you, you can't get the latest weave, whatever. But if you and your family building, yeah, and make sure you know that you own a whole damn block, Absolutely. can't nobody say nothing to you. Precisely, and that's you know, and there's so much that you said in that in that 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 run, man. It's like, okay, where do I touch on? Like, so one of the things that I think, which I was saying, is a marathon. I was also gonna say, absolutely right. I tell people like, it's a marathon. I ran that, but two, it's a relay. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to be passing the baton constantly and receiving the baton and passing. It's not just us passing, it's us receiving them. Mm -hmm. Somebody behind us has to pass it to us, so we have to keep doing that for each other. We're just passing it forward like the conveyor assembly line. Mm -hmm. Um, But one of the things that I point out is that I ask people all the time, who are the most entrepreneurial, educated local group in the United States, demographically speaking? Like, And I don't know if you know this, but like the number one most entrepreneurial and educated. Oh. And educated? Yeah. Is it black women? Like yes. the top? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And what I say to people is like, I talk to sisters, I'm like, you know, y'all winning, but y'all really not winning. They, of course, you know, get the scrunchy face. I'm like, what you mean I'm not winning? And I'm like, because you are the most entrepreneurial and the most educated. Mm-hmm. Inversely, you are the most underinvested in mm-hmm. and the most in debt. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why do you think that is? And they're like, I don't know. You know, I don't know. And I'm like, because there's no nuclear family, so you don't have a dual income to help you pay off those student loans. Mm-hmm. And you don't have a man there who is equal or, you know, more than your income. We're So we're the only cultural group in the United States where the women out-earn the man. And I'm not pushing for, like, you know, men out-earning women. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, we're the only group where the women out-earn the man. And subsequently, we're the group that's the furthest behind in the race. So I'm like... But doesn't it, that go back to a lot of those policies that were put in place to get the man out the home? But I'm saying in that, yes. Oh. Now sisters are like, oh, we're independent. You know, we don't necessarily need a man. Or if we do, we want him in this type of energy. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, there. it's like people don't see the correlation between the fact that, you know, we're the only cultural group where the women out earn the man and we're also the furthest behind as a cultural group in the United States. Mm-hmm. Like, we There's aren't there investing there. there. We, as the man, we aren't making enough to invest in our women or, and I tell people, like, also, sisters, I'm like, if you go into a boardroom and you're negotiating for, you know, your your income for a job mm-hmm. or you're negotiating for, like, you know, your the investment for a company, mm-hmm. most of those white people who are, like, my, most of the VCs are white men. Mm-hmm. Most of them are looking at you and they know that you cannot afford to, like, turn down whatever deal they give you. Mm-hmm. It's like being on Shark Tank. It's like, I'm going to give you 20%. I'm going to value your company at 20 30% of what it's actually worth. Mm-hmm. And I know that you're going to hesitate and look down at the babies mm-hmm. and be like, I gotta make the moves. I gotta make the moves, and mm-hmm. so it's like we're getting our companies undervalued. Like we don't have equity in our companies, stock that we can sell. Like it's just so many layers of how they're undermining us. And sisters are out here doing it major, like mm-hmm. movie grinding. I'm like sisters, I love it, mm-hmm. I see it. But you are never going to out hustle the mm-hmm. situation they got us in as a group. Mm-hmm. Like you can't out marry into another cultural group. Like mm-hmm. none of that's gonna work until we are good as Dr. men. Dr. Umar talks a lot about that too. It's real. Uh, how like we're the only race, at least. With a black man, mm-hmm. we marry outside of our race at a higher rate than any other race. Right. Now, I disagree with some of his tenets on, on like that's destroying the community. Mm-hmm. Like, because I think there's other factors mm-hmm. like that fall into place. Absolutely. But I, 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 I can somewhat see a correlation with we don't have a lot of head of households. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the nuclear family is destroyed. Yeah. Uh, like you said, if there's a huge wealth gap just within the home where women are out earning their men. Mm-hmm more educated they they don't feel that they could be submissive mm-hmm. to to the man mm-hmm. so it's such an imbalance but Absolutely. again i if we go back to a lot of the policies that were in place mm-hmm. you know a lot of families within our community grew up in single parent homes mm-hmm. single women mm-hmm. and you know it was rewarded to extent to and, and you know basically to not have the man in the home 
Yes. Because, you know, uh, when in the past, when I had a child, I had a child 18, I don't know if you knew that. but Yeah, yeah I think I did. Yeah, but, you know, at that time, you know, my ex-wife, she was getting benefits and all that. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, I want to do the right thing. We got married, man. They swept the rug up under our feet. Absolutely. I mean, pulled it. Like, child care, everything. And yeah. I wasn't making enough to really support her family. She was going to school. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sitting there working, yeah. going to school part-time. And that's why I tell people, like, my fiance, you know, it's been a whole thing about being married. And I've explained to her, like, marriage is a legal status. Mm-hmm. My commitment to you is what makes me makes you want to marry me. Oh, exactly. But I'm here. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm like, that marriage isn't going to change anything but our tax base and what benefits we can get as single people. So I've been telling, like, it's to me, it's a game. Like, we should be. And that was only created to actually monitor. Exactly. Uh, the, and control. Like, like the, like, I want to say, like, uh, what do you call it? Interracial. Couples Absolutely. and stuff like that's that's why I was created in the first place, and Absolutely. I think the marriage like and that could be a whole other podcast. Absolutely. But Absolutely. but <laughs> seriously, <laughs> but the point is is that it swept the rug under our feet, mm-hmm. and I had to literally start learning how to do this all on my own. Yeah. So you know, I go back to the Michael Jackson song, you "Can't feed your baby, don't have a baby." Right. So I say, you know, I, I I got these two kids, I'm gonna make it work. Yeah. I was working yeah. extra, I was going to school, and I was doing all that. And it, it taught me a lesson, um, and and I can't think of his name. Is it is it Frederick Douglass who mm-hmm. talked about that? You know, was it during like Reconstruction when he talked about allow us to 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 do our own? If we fall, we fall. Yeah. yeah. You know, because if we get out here, and if if it's too much, you don't feel that it's it's a skill set. It Absolutely. taught me, hey, don't go out and have more kids because you can't afford them right now. Absolutely. Yeah, it was thirty seven. That's why I had not yet. You know, I, yeah, I mean, had my scares, but I'm like, I realized if I'm gonna do this, I think it's another statistic about like a black man has to have twenty years of inter- uninterrupted success mm-hmm. for him to really climb outside of the that kind of bracket mm-hmm. of like being guaranteed not to make it above that mm-hmm. bracket. Mm-hmm. And if you have one fall, one failure in that, it mm-hmm. can literally. It can unravel derail. everything. Like after twenty years, fifteen years in, whatever. It's like we really have no safety net. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, it's like the children. A lot of the sisters, you know, are going through it on their end. They're mm-hmm. under the same spells that mm-hmm. a lot of us brothers are. So mm-hmm. they're gonna go straight to the child, you know, support system mm-hmm. and get all that, you know. And and it's like the government knows that. Like yeah. this isn't you would if you if they really if it was really a thing where they cared. They would have already looked at the data and been like, man, this is destroying these families. We got to find another way to do this. But they well, know exactly what, because they need us poor and disheveled. So man. we're now investing mm-hmm. in their businesses with our time and energy. We can't get clear enough to run our own things. We can't, we can't. work together and trust it's, each other it's enough. It's barely enough to stay afloat. Exactly. If that, exactly. I would call it. I mean, you're literally going down under the water and coming up for air just to stay alive. It, like waterboarding. They're waterboarding us. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things where, it, even with child support, I, I had a video where that was initially created. Mm-hmm. For the new and, and it had its place at the time, absolutely, because there was a huge gap between when men left the household, they were able to go and make make amends and, and create a whole new life. Where yeah. women who will stay at home wives yeah. couldn't really make a living. Right. That's a different story. This is a wholly totally different dynamic now, absolutely. You know, and again, that's a whole other podcast to go to. But within our community, you know. We have to focus on, like you said, the, the economics, right? Mm-hmm. So what's going to keep you from getting economics? If my economics is going to taking care of kids I can't afford at mm-hmm. this age, mm-hmm. you know, like with our kids, like my, my current wife and I, we talk about, we, we really hammer, like, you can go to school, but don't go get in debt. Right. You can, um, you know, uh, don't have children. Yeah. You can't afford them. Yeah. Focus on your goals. Yeah. You know, like, uh, we, we talk about life insurance policies. Yes. Something to happen to us. But how, what's another way we could pass on generational wealth? Mm-hmm. These are like conversations and things that has to happen within every early. every family early yes. and all the time. Because if you don't, mm-hmm. that's where that vicious cycle is going to repeat. Because if you if you can't look at like you say, if you can't look and see that these systems that are in place are not helping us. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a book uh, I, I, I can't think of it off. It's, it's, I want to say it's stop helping us. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'll put it in the description. Okay. Um, but it, 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 it basically talk about the liberal policies which mm-hmm. are put in place actually affecting and hurt black people more. Yes. Affirmative action hurt mm-hmm. us more. Like we think that's good, but integration hurt us more. Yeah, it's like it's all those things that we think that are that that helps us and it actually hurt us. You Absolutely. know, we where they allowed us to let's say get into certain programs. Exactly. And they curve it to where we don't have to meet a certain criteria. 
just so they can meet a quota, yeah. that's not helping us. The same with integration. It was like once we were allowed to live in the same neighborhoods, mm -hmm. it wasn't a black doctor li living next to a black trash collector anymore. Because that's mm -hmm. what used to happen in our community. That's why our communities thrive. Like everybody lived in the community, a doctor. You can literally walk down to a, a black doctor's door and knock in the middle of the night like, man, something's going on with my wife. I think she may be going into labor and he could put on his, you know, his house shoes and run over to the house and do, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't have that anymore. Like literally the professional skilled trades people are in our community are always trying to run, you know, and get the hell up out of there mm -hmm. as soon as they can. And that's what integration did. You know, same with the schools. Our schools had the, the children of black doctors, the children of black investment bankers, the children of black trash collectors, the children of real estate, like the real estate developers where mm -hmm. everybody was kind of like, man, I can kind of find my own lane because mm -hmm. I'm immersed in like a sea of like black success and like you know achievement mm -hmm. and as soon as they opened up the doors on integration you know the ones who had enough money was like oh, i'm out yeah i mean and and that's the thing you know like and that's where like i i i, I kind of resonate when dr umar talks about that like mm -hmm. i said if you decide to go interracial that's mm -hmm. where like his his stance is a little strong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i just feel like that to to the degree we have to build our community and the way you do that is with that nuclear family yes because if, if you don't take that important, yeah. I think I, I would say make it six layers. Yeah. That's that's the bottom one, even below economics. Because to get to the economics, mm -hmm. if if the baton ain't even being passed to you, mm -hmm. the motherfucker sitting down. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shit, man. I mean, if he ain't if you ain't working out, yeah. If you ain't prepping, yeah. You know, and you see in these other communities that are thriving, yeah. They own everything within our neighborhoods, and we don't see that's a problem. Absolutely. And, or, or, and when we see a black business, we don't go to them, right? You know, because this is a negative connotation that there's there's rude service and hell, there's rude service everywhere. And as a black business, as a black somebody who supports black businesses, oftentimes I tell the black business owners there's a responsibility on us mm -hmm. to even in a presentation mm -hmm. because a lot of times you know we don't understand the polish on mm -hmm. the thing because we're just trying to get to it. It's needs based versus wants based entrepreneurship, which is a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like. They look the same, but they aren't. Mm -hmm. People who are once based are people who have a middle, you know, they're coming from like middle income families, like, mm -hmm. you know, who are doing all right. And it's like they go to college and it's like, you know what, I'm going to start a business just because it's something to do after I get a decent job. Mm -hmm. But a needs based entrepreneur is somebody who is like in a drug dealer, or I'm going to talk about our sisters who are in the sex working game, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, doing cam modeling, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, stripping, whether mm -hmm. it's prostitution. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's the same thing as the brothers in the streets doing stick-ups, mm -hmm. you know, selling dope, whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, in both cases, we're seeking from that needs-based standpoint. And mm -hmm. some of us that don't go that route, that are doing legitimate things, mm -hmm. even that type of needs-based entrepreneurship is a blessing and a curse because we got the hustle, we have the grit, we have the ingenuity, but we oftentimes are limited in our scope and our imagination for what we can do with this thing. We're oftentimes just reserved to doing things that other people are doing, like mimetic desires. I'm going to go and sell, you know, bundles because I see my friends selling bundles. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to think about what actual skills and strengths that I possess. Mm -hmm. My personality type, my my communication style, mm -hmm. and my affinity and my interest in certain subject matters mm -hmm. to form a business. Right. We're looking at like, yo, I can get these bottles of water for a dollar and sell them for two dollars. Like, we're all about like trinket mm -hmm. um uh, I call it like bender entrepreneurship, not right. like real innovation, mm -hmm. like the cargo texture piece. Like I'm like, I'm working on that because not only is it innovative, mm -hmm. it also brings in a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so now I can actually make enough money to now lobby. Um, like a, one of the city commissioners I talked to is now in, um, Shanice Turner's loss. Like when she was running, I was mm -hmm. telling her, you know, like, yo, I don't believe, I'm, I'm apolitical when it comes to voting. I don't vote. I haven't voted since. The whole thing went down in Florida with the, you know, miscount back in like 2004 or something like that. Oh, the, and uh, so I was just mm -hmm. like, after I saw that happen, mm -hmm. like 19 years old, I'm like, oh, no, this, is mm -hmm. ain't, this ain't it. But I was like, what I realized is that that's just representative democracy where it's like, yeah, we want to hear your opinion. We mm -hmm. want to get what you think. Mm -hmm. But we've already had somebody else who paid for this candidate to get in. So, mm -hmm. like, they're going to win. But we want to know what you think, though, because, you know, for technically sure. we have to give you that right as a citizen. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, there's not any real power in voting. We can mm -hmm. vote till we've been doing it for 60 years. Yeah, we have. And and, 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 and that's where, like, I feel like no matter who you vote for, technically, it, it really comes down to us. Yes. Um, Because, you know, that's, that is an illusion. I yes. feel like by just me simply voting, yes. things are going to get magically get changed. Yes. And, you know, everything is all better. And it's it comes down true. to policy. It's policy, not the voting. It's the policy mm -hmm. that goes into place. Like, there's another thing that talks about how all poverty is a result of the policy in place. Like, po poverty could be eradicated mm -hmm. with just changes in the government's policy. Mm -hmm. 
just the changes to the policy could eradicate poverty. And there's a book on that. I can't think of the name of it. Mm -hmm. But it gets into like, yo, it really is by careful design of the government to, again, keep that pyramid intact because they need that lower base. It's the same thing with drugs. Absolutely. I mean, my father always told me if they wanted to get rid of drugs, they can do it right now. Absolutely. They can stop the imports. But it's such a an important part of the economy. Yep. There's actually like Wall Street investors. Yes. That I've heard that, that has investments in that. It's, it's weird. It's, it's a shadow it's, economy. It's a shadow, yeah, it's a shadow economy. economy. Yep. And, you know, but look at the cost. Yes. Of what it destroys yes. on like families who are destroyed, who don't get the nurture and love that they need to really build and build foundational wealth Precisely. because they're uh, addicted to something yes. that was chemically created. Yes. Like in a lab, yes. To to literally market and and destroy families, and I mean, and not even just illegal drugs. I mean, the the biggest drug dealers in the in this country in the world are the Sackler family, mm. with like oxycotton. Mm -hmm. Like none of those, none of them are going to go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. And they made billions. They are the richest drug dealers in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. They are not going to see jail time. They're going to pay some fines. They like, Shh, let us know, bro, how much you got to pay so we can right. get on with this. Like, yeah. and do the next drug, you know, designer drug output, like. They, I mean, it's a movie out about it, about how they knew. Mm. They lied to the doctors and everybody about the, the, the potential for addiction and the intensity of the addiction with these pills and told, like, oh, no, you want me. And it came out, you know, within nine days of using Oxycontin, you were mm. addicted. Like, mm. there was no chance. And so that literally decimated. We were, we were still watching the drug ep epidemic rage on. I was flipping houses in the middle of it on the east side of mm. Dayton. Mm. And it was like nine out of ten contractors that I tried to hire or either addicted or mm. currently like, you know, trying to stop, but like, you know, going relapse. And so I had to really just sit and wait to find, you know, contractors who weren't addicted because I refused to hire any that works. I'm like, as soon as I pay you, I want, I'm not going to be responsible for you overdosing. That's the first thing. And not right? only that, you know, uh, you, I'm not going to come to my house and find you dead in my property. Well, and my name is on it. Exactly. You know, and, and, and it's, when you're building a business, it's something to consider. Definitely. You know, I, I, I I was telling my pops, I want some work, other work done. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, oh, man, it's these contractors all in his home, man. They all got good skills. And I'm like, they're there for a reason, pops. Exactly. Like, exactly. You know, and it's, it's nothing against them, but it's just like, I don't want to deal with that energy. Right, right. You know, so I want to deal with somebody who's clean-headed and, and got their head on their shoulder. And cause the, but I do agree that the drug ep epidemic could be stopped. Yes. Instantly. It could be stopped. Yes. But and, why are people doing drugs, though? Because they're not living in their purpose, and they're in a system that's literally just treating them like chum. Yeah. For sharks, and so mm -hmm. there's. I mean, if you aren't doing illegal drugs, you're on antidepressants. Like it's yeah. the most prescribed drug in this country. So when we get to like the legal drug industry, mm -hmm. it's just as bad as the illegal drug industry, and that's the reality of it. It's just white people put it in a pill form and make mm -hmm. it look good in a commercial with the family running through a field and shit, and then they read down <laughs> have the commercials about all the side effects and potential for death and shit. Yeah, but they say it fast while they're saying in this soft voice with the sun shining mm -hmm. and shit. And it's you like, feel, bro, what the good. hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's. <laughs> It's systematic, and and there's there's people I would say a lot smarter than us that mm -hmm. sit and and cultivate these things yes. to to keep us under. Absolutely, you know, it's just like with social media. You yes. know, they talk about all the experts that 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 really research on how to keep people addicted to social media. Absolutely, you know, those algorithms. Trust me, it's you're not alone if you feel like you can't. Stop looking at Instagram all and, it, day. and it hacks your mental and makes you feel like you love less than because you aren't living. I mean, it's exactly. like you said, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Consumption so, is the name of the game in this country. Yeah. If we're consuming, we're spending money because we want to feel better about ourselves. It's mm -hmm. all based on making us feel less than. So we need more yeah. of this. We need more clothes. We need more drugs. We need more food. We need yeah. more cars. We and, need and, more and, sex. But and that's where, like, you know, I liked, you know, the idea where Cosby wanted to buy that station, right? Yeah. And, you know, and, and not get into whatever he had going on. But his purpose was to change the narrative mm -hmm. at least with our people mm -hmm. because if you look at other cultures and i and i made a uh, podcast talking about rap is it the disease mm -hmm. or the cure mm -hmm. and within our community the stuff that's perpetuated is the stuff that destroys our community mm -hmm. but there are other things that destroy other communities and, mm -hmm. and that they have their issues with mm -hmm. but tell me is it perpetuated as much in show in media mm -hmm. As with ours. And it's not. It's not. And then because I, brother, it's crazy. I was on another podcast this weekend, mm -hmm. and I was talking about MMOs, media monitoring organizations. Mm -hmm. And I was talking particularly about the ones surrounding the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, have you ever heard of, like, GLAD or, like, the Rainbow Coalition? GLAD is spelled with two A's. Like, it's like G-L-A-A-D. It's like an acronym. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it stands for. But that and the Rainbow Coalition are both media monitoring organizations. Mm -hmm. 
It started in the 80s mm-hmm. when, you know, the AIDS epidemic had just kicked off and was really, you know, going crazy and had everybody scared. Mm-hmm. They came in and started controlling how the media portrayed LG, the LGBTQ community. Like, they literally come in and are like, no, hold on. Before you put that script out, before you put that movie or that TV show out or that song out, mm. you need to remove the word fag. You need to remove the word queer. You need to remove the word this. You have to remove all these things because mm-hmm. we're not letting you portray us like that no more. Right. And we will sue the shit about you if you defame gay people and lesbian people and, like, mm-hmm. queer and et cetera. So it was like they literally just, like, we are about the word nigga. I realized they did that with the word queer. A mm-hmm. homegirl of mine told me she was queer, and I thought that meant that she was, like, lesbian. One of my homeboys was like, hey, what's up? You know a homegirl? I'm like, oh, bro, you know, she's gay. She's not interested in man. And then she came back to me after they started dating and was like, why'd you tell them I was gay? I'm like, because you said you were queer. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no, that doesn't mean gay. And I was like, I don't, I didn't know. Right, I'm like, you right. said it as if that's what it meant to make it clear, almost like mm-hmm. just clearing, you know, who you, what your identity was. So mm-hmm. I thought that that was like you reclaiming the word that once was considered pejorative, like the word nigga. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't know. Right. And so it was just like, man, when I started like researching, it just was last summer, I found out what Glad did. Mm-hmm. It was a commercial, it was like a radio. I don't know why I had to, I don't even listen to radio, but it just happened to be on in that moment in a rental car or something. Mm-hmm. And Glad was being, it is a, the CEO was being interviewed, and they were talking about what Glad was. And I, I mean, the light bulb went off like, where the fuck are the black media monitoring yeah, we organizations? Don't, we, we don't is there anybody that's stepping up and being like, oh, hell nah, you can't mm-hmm. show us in that light. Nope, yeah, nope, that, that song can't be played on the radio because right. our kids are going to hear that. And, and no, who's doing that for us? Like, why exactly. haven't we taken the, and I'm in the Jewish, um, the uh, Anti Defamation League. Mm-hmm. That's the Jewish my media, my, my media monitoring organization. Like mm-hmm. literally Anti Defamation League. Like you mm-hmm. can't get in there and defame Jewish people. Mm-hmm. They coming in and saying no, hell, hell nah. You can't get on there and make it seem like all Jewish people are greedy and miserly and look mm-hmm. like this and rats and all this stuff that you know was perpetuated in the. No, you can't do that. Right. Like and so I'm like, who is doing that for us? And when mm-hmm. are we going to start advocating? Not just reactive once it happens. Exactly. Preventing it from Pre- even happening. Yeah. Like it, 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 it has to just go through. And it's not against like artistic freedom, right? Because I believe there's a there's a layer yes. of artistic freedom, but it's just to the degree that we're perpetuated in 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 all media, mm-hmm. like you said, it's like, it's no oversight, right? I mean, right. it's none. Like I remember I was watching a video and I talked about it in the podcast. It was just like literally, man, they, like they just aiming guns the whole damn time, right? Right. And, and and me as an adult, I can internalize and understand like this is cool, but right. when you got children, right? Teenagers, and, and you remember the Lupe uh, Fiasco song "Bad Bitch," where he talks yeah, about yep. it, it's just like how they don't understand all the shit that go behind and 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 the facade they put on and all this stuff. But these kids get out and they internalize it. Yeah, then they go ruin their entire fucking lives. Absolutely, you Absolutely. know, trying to be gangster, right, or imitate what they see, right, or, or trying to be you know sexually attractive, you know, suggesting attractive, and that's. Like the WAP thing. When that came out, everybody was like, you know, the women was like, why can't we talk about it? Man, been talking about it in the songs for the longest. And my response was like, I don't have a problem with the song per se. My issue is you as a sister don't see that this is just the, the hot and tot, hot and trot, hot and tot Sarah Bartman situation all over again. Like mm. the most valuable thing on you is your genitals. Right. Like that's what the, the people who control the Jewish people who control the media mm-hmm. and are letting rap and all this be perpetuated, mm-hmm. that's what they're showing you. So I'm like, yo, it's not about artistic freedom. Mm-hmm. It's about free market. Rap is not a free market. Mm-hmm. It's controlled by people who are like, this is the stuff that's going to get the most shock, right. going to be the most, you know, just the most guttural and the most raw and it's going to really d- touch deep down to that dark side of people. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I tell people like, there's rappers, you know, artists that I listen to that are like, yo, on straight consciousness and it's not corny like it's mm-hmm. and it's young cats yeah but they never gonna get that recognition mm-hmm. they'll exist in like these pockets and like the young people know about about them because they're in there digging through the crates now mm-hmm. you know digital crates mm-hmm. but i'm like they'll never really get that same glory on the surface level right. like a the baby does or mm-hmm. like you know any of these other these other artists make the stallion etc and i'm like that's cool mm-hmm. but it's a reason that they're the ones so i'm like if it was a free market type of situation in the rap game then mm-hmm. that would be about artistic freedom but it's literally controlled who gets the most who gets, play, who gets who get, on the stages. Mm-hmm. We don't control those festivals. Yeah, those, we don't those, control the venues mm-hmm. like that. Those like those big venues. Like so, I'm like they're literally making it seem like we're choosing this, mm-hmm. but we don't have a choice. It's like it's the same with Dems and Republicans. Yeah, we're, we have a duopoly. Like you really don't have a choice. Either not listen to the mainstream, mm-hmm. or or you know dig and spend all your time trying to find good artists mm-hmm. because they don't let the other good artists. Like for every every the baby, there's you know. There's a million Lupe fiascos mm-hmm. and and uh, what's underachievers and mm-hmm. Isaiah Rashad's and you know can go on and on where they just it's cool uh, Kendrick 
J. Cole, like, they made it. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like they made it because there was nobody else filling that lane. Right. It was all just this debased rap. Right. And I'm like, man, like, we really don't have a controller. But it's the number one genre in the world. Like, that's... It, it, it is. And I talked about this in my podcast. I'm like, I was overseas. And you'd be surprised how much they enjoy our music. Yes. Like, I was it. like, damn, bro, you know all the words, you know everything. It's like, yeah, man, he's rapping Tupac, doing all of that. And like you said, if, if, and I, and I, I've never heard it that way, that mm-hmm. it's not a free market mm-hmm. because technically it's being controlled, was being put out there. Absolutely. Because if it was a free market. Right. Because the stuff I have on my phone is not representative of what's actually on. Same. It's, it's not. It, and it, I listen it, to new artists. I do. I do too. So it doesn't even pertain to that. So I agree with that. Because if you if you look at all the views and all that, and those are all algorithms, man. That's, that's all that somebody said. Who's on yeah. the who's on the views? Who's on the shows? My brother in law yeah. raps. He's really good, man. His name is Eman Jones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, I definitely be checking his work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, being a paper. Uh, I mean, like rap. Mike Jones do all that Tyler stuff. Tyler Quali, all them. Yeah, yep. all of them. Like uh, uh, Sky Zoo, like yep. like bunch of people, man. Yeah, very talent. Talent won't only get you, get you that far. Yeah, but beyond that, it's it's who they control. Who they let out exactly. because he's not talking about killing. Right. You know, he's a father. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's not talking about, you know, dealing drugs or, right. you know, any of that. Because there's a difference between art of, of what happened versus perpetuating this as though this is the th- only part of us that exists. This, like we're exactly. monolithic in this one aspect. Yeah, that's my problem. It's like everybody thinks the black man is monolithic, you know, mm-hmm. and if he's not on no gangster shit, he's corny. Yeah. And it's like, damn, I can't, like, I, I can be, I, I read something that's like the difference between being street. Was it being a street, being a street dude and being a hood dude? Mm-hmm. Like, like you from the like we from the streets. We grew up mm-hmm. in the hood, mm-hmm. but we not necessarily street dudes. Mm-hmm. And it's like they're, they we come from the same context, but we made a choice at a fork in the road exactly. to be like, you know what? And I didn't have my father growing up. My father stole my loan money to go to college. That's why I didn't go to Tuskegee. But it mm-hmm. catapulted me into entrepreneurship mm-hmm. because I remember thinking in that moment at eighteen, like. This is a fork in the road in my life. Mm-hmm. All my cousins are in the streets. I could choose this and be completely justified. Right. I know I in my head I was thinking, I can tell this story about my dad doing this. So anytime anybody brings up, why are you doing this? Like, I'm justified. My dad stole my loan money. Right. What the fuck would you do? Mm-hmm. I can be angry about that. I'm like, or mm-hmm. I could go and get a job and just hold it down and do that. I'm like, but I know that's not my, my personal journey. Right. And entrepreneurship was just like, you know, I hear about it. I don't know what it is. I read Robert, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And back mm-hmm. then it was like it only been out a few years, mm-hmm. but it was on the bestsellers, you know, New York Times bestsellers and all that. And it was like a light bulb went off. And I had already had the passion for liberation work, but I didn't know how I wanted to do that work for our people. And it was like economics is the answer. In 2003, it was like, we should be liberating ourselves through economics. So I mm-hmm. began my study. Like, I want to master real estate. I want to master the credit game. I want to master the financial uh, markets. And I want to master starting businesses. These are four areas he talked about in the book that build wealth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to master all four of myself through my own MBA program, focused on these four subject matter. Over the next, you know, three to four years for each one, next 16 years. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to create something that's going to be like, you know, a a comprehensive solution to this. I didn't know Mm -hmm. what that was going to look like. And so Mm -hmm. fast forward 19 years later, this is where I'm at with things. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. I did all of those things that I set out to do. Mm -hmm. Even in me still going out, having fun, doing the things. I ain't have no kids, you Mm -hmm. know. I, I'm pretty sure that most of the women in my life can say, you know, he was an A1 dude. even oh, sure. And it's like, like I st- always strive to just be my best in that moment and to get better. So what would be your message like to close it? Like what what would be like the few things you would say, like the must-haves where we need to start? Mm-hmm. Like, how, how, like how, how would you close it, man, to, to give our listeners something to make sure, sure they take away? Um, development for me is the name of the game okay. in every sense of the word. I just looked up the etymology for the word this past Friday after having like planned to do it for years and it means to unfold or unfurl or unwrap. Mm-hmm. So it literally means to like basically turn yourself inside out and really like open up all the aspects and potentials of yourself to like really dig in and find out what those things are. Mm-hmm. And so I encourage development at every level, personal development, professional development, mm-hmm. Business development, real estate development, you know, family development, you know, psychological development, spiritual development. Like, it's, if development is the name of the game, we have to be constantly developing ourselves and never being comfortable or at peace with our current state of development. And also making sure that we're passing that on and building trust and community because we are not bears, we are ants. So we have to think more like an ant colony than like, you know, a bear that's hibernating with his cubs in a cave somewhere, having to do everything by itself, hunt kill, protect everything by itself. We are not designed as a species to be that way. Right. So we really have to come together, whether it be, you know, your best friends, you have to find a whole new group of people 
You're gonna have to find a whole new group. You're gonna have to find. Yeah, a lot of times you have, you have to. to. Yeah, because family and friends, it's just everybody has their their stigmas and their their vid their their thoughts of you attached, and they a lot of us can't release that. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, you have to go outside of yourself and find a new group, and that's I mean that's even like you know network development. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean development is the name of the game, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just to close, I, I think the, my journey through work, uh, I've learned, you know, with networking, I've always grown by attaching myself with people that I aspire to be. Yes. So if they had more, and it was never a jealousy. It was yes. never a, it was like, I was always picking their ears, like, hey, how did you get there? What yeah. did you do? Like, yeah. how did you get this much money? Like, yeah. 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 we make the same amount of money. How'd you, how were you able to save way more than me? What are you doing differently? And and it was like, well, I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, let me read that. Mm -hmm. You know, I did this. So I always say, like, like attach yourself with people that you aspire to be. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to ask them questions. Don't be afraid to, 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 to unlayer yourself and realize that maybe everything that you held tight or held dear or was taught was wrong. Absolutely. Because if you look through generations. And if you guys are all at the same spot each generation, that's that's not growth. Yes. Because if you look at a white family, or excuse, Caucasian family, or other families who are each generation are just making power moves, mm -hmm. they're on businesses, they're doing all this, and you realize your family is not doing that. It's not because you're not smart enough. It's, it's not random luck of the draw. It's not random luck of the draw. Like we live in a, a capitalist society, you can make it happen. But it comes down to making those small changes mm -hmm. and understanding where you're deficient at. That's you have to look in the mirror. Yes. And, you know, um, the purpose of this podcast, like I say on everyone, is for you guys to develop, for you guys to learn, for you guys to understand. And this is the open discussion dialogue. Get in the comments. You know, uh, there's probably things we missed. We yeah. can't cover everything in an hour. Um, it's definitely something we may come back and revisit in the future. But, um, you know, just close with a few things on how they can reach you yep, yep, yep. and um, how they can support your business ventures or how they want to get involved with that. And mm -hmm. that's how I'm going to close it. All right, cool. You can catch me on IG, Omek, my first name in reverse, um, also, I'll, I'll spell it on there, too. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. that. And then Trep House, uh, trephouse.co, T-R-E-P. Uh, H O U S C dot co. Um, design a build is DTB firm, Delta Tango Bravo firm dot com. Um, both of those on IG as well. If you connect with me, my personal IG, I have those on my uh, bio. So, you know, I have some other things coming up, a lot of cool stuff. We have a location downtown for Trep House. We have a facility for Design to Build out on West 3rd Street. We're going to be doing the fabrication of the containers out of. So, we're going to be doing grand openings for both of those spaces. So, we're going to definitely have the community out. Okay. Hey, you guys heard it. So, the information is in the description. Yes. It's posted right here in the video. You know how I like to make it. Hey, thank you for coming in. Thank you, brother. Thank you, family, for tuning in. Until next time.